Today on our 2016 Nexus Viper Motorhome, we're gonna be taking a look at the Roadmaster Direct Replacement Sway Bar End Links. So here's what the end links are going to look like once you have them installed. As you can see, they fit great and we don't have any clearance issues or anything to worry about like that. So just to kind of give you a side-by-side -side comparison, here I have the Roadmaster and the factory end link. And it doesn't take a genius to realize that the Roadmaster looks much beefier and much stronger. The factory one is relatively thin and made from aluminum. The Roadmaster is nice and thick and made from steel. You're also gonna tell that they are the same length. So that should put your mind at ease knowing that they indeed are a direct replacement. So no crazy modifications needed or anything like that. More importantly though, if you look at the factory one, there's a little dust boot, and this is more or less just a ball and socket in here, and that allows it to articulate like this. The movement is relatively limited. You don't have a ton of movement, and as soon as that starts to wear out, it gets really sloppy and loose, and that's where you can get some noise coming from, and these won't transfer that energy that your sway bar is running through here, and that's going to affect your handling a little bit too but a lot of times on larger motorhomes you're not going to notice a huge difference but you will be able to notice that noise and everything else set the factory one aside take a look at the roadmaster what i'll do is just take some of our hardware off these are actually pretty interesting they use a spherical bearing inside of here so this is gonna have a ton of maneuverability. It articulates any single which way you want it. It's nice and tight. These type of bearings in here are all solid. And so there's no rubber or anything like that to wear out. So these are gonna do a great job of staying quiet and transferring that energy. So really nice setup. I'm actually really impressed with these, and if I had a motorhome with the Roadmaster Sway Bar, I would not hesitate to put these on myself. So now that we kind of compared the Roadmaster end links to the factory end links, let's talk about why you'd want these in the first place. If your old end links were worn out, would new factory ones work just fine? Yeah, they would, but the biggest thing to me why I would want these is really the longevity and the reliability that you're gonna get from these. I know if I was over the road, trying to go on vacation, my motorhome, the last thing I'd wanna to have to worry about is parts going bad and trying to get them fixed and everything else. That could just be a complete headache. And with these, it's one less component you're not gonna to have to worry about. These are gonna last for a very long time and you should get a ton of miles out of them. So. That's the big thing for me. If I had to climb under here and change these out, I would definitely only wanna to have to do it one time. Even though they're not too bad to get done, still something you're just not gonna really feel like doing. So why waste your time at the factory replacement and come back a couple years down the road and have to do it again, have to get the part again and so on. With these, you pick them up, you put them on, and you're done. You're not gonna have to worry about any issues in the future. So here's a perfect example today on our motorhome why a Roadmaster end link would be needed. Here we have the factory end link, and as you can see, it just is worn out. It's loose inside of there, there's a ton of play, and it's clanking around as you're going down the road. And in my opinion, the factory end links probably will wear out a little bit quicker than the beefier Roadmaster ones. And that's because once you put that Roadmaster sway bar on, it's a lot stiffer and it's gonna cause a lot more pressure on these end links, causing them to wear out. So whenever that does happen, to me, it wouldn't make too much sense to replace this end link with the same one because chances are pretty good, the same thing's gonna happen again. So why even give yourself a headache down the road? You can eliminate that by using the Roadmaster Direct Connect and links. You can see they are much more beefy and strong and will be a perfect matchup 
for our Roadmaster sway bar. Now there is one thing I would highly recommend doing. If you don't have any Roadmaster suspension upgrades yet, particularly the front sway bar, if you decide to run a front sway bar, which I'm sure you've looked into considering you're checking out the end links, if you end up running the sway bar, I would definitely get these in conjunction with it. You kind of get that whole complete package while you're down here changing out the sway bar. You might as well ditch those factory end links and put the Roadmasters on as well. Then you get that complete solid reliability and drivability that you're looking for. So at the end of the day, the best replacement option, in my opinion, you really can't go wrong with this. These are gonna give you that peace of mind and make you feel a little bit safer whenever you're going down the road. Now, probably one of the best features actually is how easy these are to get installed. Probably the most difficult part is actually getting underneath the motorhome itself, but once you're under here, it's only a couple of bolts and everything's pretty easy to get to, so shouldn't really give you a whole lot of issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put these on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be underneath the front of our RV, right here in this area, kind of just inside of our front tire. So first thing we need to do is get our factory end link off, and it's going to be pretty easy. We're just going to have one nut there and one up here. So I'm going to take a wrench and break it loose. A lot of times what can happen though, especially on end links that are really worn out, you can see when I turn that nut, it's actually pivoting the whole shaft there. And so you're not going to be able to break it loose. So what you can do is take another wrench, hold that. That's going to prevent it from spinning. And then we're able to break that nut loose. And usually after a few turns, you can get away with not holding this other wrench on there you'll feel it kind of come loose. And when that happens, we should be able to just kind of run that nut off. That's not every case, but the majority of them, it feels like in our situation, I might have to hold this wrench on there a little longer than usual, but no big deal. Once you have that nut off, you can kind of pop that out and then I'm just going to do that same thing to get this nut removed up here. Once we get that other nut removed we can pull our factory end link out and set it to the side. First thing we want to check is to make sure that our attachment points are going to be large enough for our new bolt to pass through. These bolts are just a tad larger. In our case the bottom one goes right through. If we try to put it in the top one, it is pretty tight. So I'm not sure if this hole was originally large enough and that worn out end link kind of wathered things around, not allowing us to pass our bolt through. But if that's your case, not really a huge deal. All we're gonna do is open that hole up a little bit. So you can use a drill bit or something like that. I happen to have a little grinder and I'm just gonna run that through, clean it up, and that way our hardware will pass through. So now that I cleaned that hole up a little bit, you can tell that our bolt can pass through. So with that done, we're gonna just take our bolt and put it through the sway bar like that. We're gonna take two flat washers, put those on. We're gonna take one of these seals, put that on. The one edge of the seal is going to be a little bit harder. So you wanna make sure you put that on with that hard side facing the washers like that. Then we can take our end link, slide that on, 
followed by a, another seal. Take another flat washer, run that over it. Then we're going to take the included Loctite, just put a drop on the threads, and all the bolts that we use to secure and links are going to get a little drop of this Loctite. Then we're going to take the nylon lock nut, we'll just get that started hand tight. I'm going to use that same exact hardware combination to secure the bottom of our end link as well. Now that we have our hardware in place and hand tight, we can grab our wrenches and snug everything up. Once we have our hardware snug, we can come back with a torque wrench and tighten everything down to the amount specified and our instructions. And once this side is torqued, we're just simply going to repeat the same process on the other side of our motorhome because everything will be set up the exact same way over there. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster direct replacement Sway bar in links on our 2016 Nexus Viper Motorhome.